It's time for the Daily Stand-Up Podcast presented by Agile Dad with your host, Lee Henson. Without any further ado, let's get started. How's it going, everyone? I recently had a student who asked me a question, and they were very curious about the way Tesla operates. And I explained to them that I'd done some work with some of the leadership team and some of the innovation team at Tesla. And they were curious exactly how they worked. Now, full transparency here, uh, Joe Justice, a very familiar name in the Agile coaching workspace, he actually had a system in place where you could build an automobile, a hardware build, using Scrum or Agile at many of the Agile conferences. So he is the expert on this field. So after reading a couple of articles about Joe and the way that he implemented things at Tesla, and of course with permission, I want to share with you how Tesla's obsession with Agile has led to them eating everybody's lunch when it comes to car manufacturing, right? So Tesla for years has been recognized as just an incredible innovator. And it's one of those things where unless you know how Tesla operates, you might not know the difference between what they're doing in their Agile implementation and what you could be doing in yours. So the question becomes... You know, the first, right out of the gate, the first thing is, how do I know I'm doing this right? And Elon, just like everything else he did, took the time to find the right Agile coaches to help him on this journey. And once he knew that he had the right people in place, then he had to have them help him figure out how Agile and software thinking can be applied to manufacturing and how the two come together to be applied towards innovation. You know, this whole journey at Tesla, it wasn't overnight, and it took lots of blood, sweat, and tears to get there. But I guess the question becomes, why is Tesla doing Agile at all? Well, as with everything else at Tesla, their goal is to increase their POI. Now, when I heard POI the first time, I thought point of interest, place of interest. I was trying to figure it out. And POI for them is pace of innovation. Elon Musk believes that the pace of innovation should be the only thing that measures and the only thing that matters in the long run for companies. It's, you know, there's a little bit of risk by doing this because you're always trying to stay ahead. You're always trying to make sure you have the next big thing. But at the same time, if you solely focus on optimization and trimming things down, what you're going to quickly learn is that you may trim away uh, the your ability to innovate and not have enough innovation to keep you afloat. So then the question becomes, how do I know I'm doing the right level? And how is the pace of innovation even measured to begin with? Well, the easiest way to do this is if you track the speed at which you can deploy changes to the product without major errors or defects that will, that will end up reaching the end consumer. So in Tesla, they often refer to that ability to release that as a sprint rather than a specific time boxed event. So the reason they do this is because they quickly learned that at Toyota, who's quite an impressive company, that cycle that I'm referring to could take up upwards of two years, could take approximately two years to get that innovation all the way pushed through. And uh, of course, that's because of the vigorous quality testing cycle and the true testing, you know, the quality management system that that Toyota has in place. I mean, they've been doing this for years and they've got it right. But it doesn't mean that's the only way this can be done right so at tesla they do something very similar but the difference is instead of taking two years they can usually get things cranked out in a matter of about two hours ouch every few hours the tesla is being produced uh, that tesla is different than the one it was before i know that sounds crazy but they can innovate almost immediately and make changes and updates this is a monumental feat right Uh, Most software companies would be proud to be able to do this change, much less producing hardware. So how does Tesla do it? I guess the big question. Well, Joe said, first, the car in a factory is architected with software principles in mind to allow for complete modularity. So everything is a module. This stops any dependencies from getting in the way to making changes to either the product or the factory. Then each car is built to be able to be changed individually, too, rather than a batch process. And they try to follow a single piece flow. Each car has a digital twin, making it a unique item that can be individually tracked in their system. This prevents challenges around only being able to make changes between batches that would otherwise be experienced. And with different parts of the car and factory being able to be changed very quickly and individually, 
Uh, that's the key to effectively test any new changes because you can test them right there to ensure that all the safety and regulatory compliance is there as quick as possible. And that can all be automated. That, my friends, is Tesla's real competitive advantage. They limit their work in progress. They make changes quickly. They focus on innovation and they automate where they can. Tesla's invested so heavy in test automation. They want to make sure that that covers all of the regulatory and safety requirements, except for the physical impact testing, of course. Everything else is covered by automation. Rather than having a human involved in all the tests, running these automated tests means the feedback is provided in a matter of seconds or minutes as opposed to days or months. So they call that testing suite factory mode. Now, factory mode allows for incremental changes to be pushed to production quickly as the cost of testing is just so cheap. It also means that quality never slips in their pursuit of speed and making things right. So it made the fact, so coincidentally, factory mode became so effective as software that that was what they used as the basis for their self-driving AI that they use today. The automated testing suite became a product in and of itself. So I think the key here to message is, is that Tesla has a radically different way that they organize and the way they do things. They focus heavily on product owners who can really focus on the work and on the backlogs and making everything clean and easy and straightforward to understand. They have engineers who build quality in and care about quality and make sure quality makes it end to end. But they also don't forget about innovation. So it's one of these things where when it comes to organizing their people, they do something different than everyone else in the industry. So instead of having like straight up defined teams, they have something called the law of two feet which means that you stand wherever you're the most valuable, right? So every day teams form around critical issues that need to be solved. Whoever has the relevant skills and experience will step in and teach others. Uh, The team will continue to work on that problem until it's solved and the changes are pushed straight to production. So before disbanding that team and moving on to new challenges, they ensure that they document or at least put together a kata card of some some type to make sure that they understand what the changes were. And this ensures that people don't get stuck in silos and they're always ready and willing to work on the most important issues. And when you think about it that way, that makes the company rather flat. So there's very little hierarchy. There's generally Elon Musk and everyone else. I mean, there's minimal leadership, but all the engineers are at the same level. Everyone works together to solve problems. So there's no layers of bureaucracy to get in the way of uh, change happening, right? Uh, even Musk has been known for getting his hands dirty, solving some critical problems within the company. He's been known to step down onto the floor and solve issues. This way, uh, you know that you're getting the highest quality product. So in a nutshell, the way that Tesla builds cars is just radically different from any other method. It's, you know, it's hard to imagine in a hardware regulated industry that you could do something so quickly. But if you think about it, it's the easiest way to get fast results that matter. It's the easiest way to focus on innovation. It's the easiest way to pivot. And it's the easiest way for us to figure things out. So I hope that helps you. Uh, If you have a question or a topic you want us to cover, feel free to reach out to us at learnmoreanagiledad.com. We'd love to hear from you. And as always, we encourage you to stay healthy, stay well, and stay agile, my friends. Until next time, do take care.